Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with my friend Todd Wagner. Hello, Rick. How you doing, Todd? I'm well, thank you. Well, good. Good to hear that. Well, we have got a question today that's all over social media, all over the news. People are asking about it, talking about it, sending questions in about it, and it's dealing with the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. So how, as a Christian, how should I think about and respond to this act? Well, um, obviously, uh, we want to do it with uh, wisdom, with grace, and with love. But let's just talk about this. The, the central question that's been debated in our country recently is, should sexual orientation specifically, that's where all the attention has been given, trump religious freedom? That, that's, that's the core question. And rooted in that is the question is, is sexual orientation um, gender identity? Is that a protected class of people? Okay. Some folks have come out and said that this uh, Religious Freedom Restoration Act that Indiana has, which, by the way, should not be controversial. 31 different states have very similar laws. In 1993, our federal government passed the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, 435 to 0 in Congress, 97 to 3 in the Senate, and our president at the time, Bill Clinton, signed it. It's 533 leaders to 3 who said it was a good idea. And it's been non-controversial, really, for the better part of the last, you know, almost 20 years. Uh, and so um, what's the issue? The issue today is that there is a lot of momentum racing forward that we cannot speak to the issue of sexual orientation or gender identity without being intolerant bigots in the same way that people in the South in the 60s and 50s with Jim Crow laws okay, were bigots then. Now, the difference between the Religious Freedom Restoration Act and Jim Crow's laws, Jim Crow laws forced tolerant, if you will, black-friendly businesses to be intolerant. It would not let you serve uh, a person of race in the South uh, biscuits and gravy. You couldn't give them a cake. This is saying the Religious Freedom Restoration Act is just protecting what is a First Amendment right. It's what makes our country great. Our, our founders believed, okay, that there were certain inalienable rights that men should be given. Among those are the freedom to, to live and worship and, and uh, live underneath the sun, live before God in a way that did not violate your conscience. And so uh, we have what's called the Establishment Clause in our Constitution. And it says that government should, should make no law respecting the establishment of a religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech is the next thing that comes out of that and other things after that. And so notice what's in our Constitution, Rick. What's in our Constitution is a restriction put on government People are free. What well, the restriction is, government can't be coercive in making people do what is a violation of their conviction. Unless, and this has always been the standard for over 200 years, unless there's a compelling governmental interest. And even when there's a compelling government interest, the government's got to prove that this is the least restrictive way to uh, accomplish that governmental interest. So what would be our governmental interest? We want to be a society that treats people civilly and uh, treats people lovingly and equally, okay? Nobody is claiming that uh, the RFRA in any way, the federal one or the Indiana one or the Arkansas one or the Texas one, should give people a right to say, I'm not going to serve you because uh, I don't like the way you sleep with other people. No one believes that. No one's even tried in 20-some-odd years to make that claim, okay? What it's really about is are people... Uh, of Jewish uh, you know, faith, of Islamic faith, of Christian faith, or of almost any other universal faith, um, should we make them participate in an activity that they think violates their conscience? Loving people, serving them food, no one thinks that's, that's going to violate their conscience. Okay, But to say, I will participate with you in celebrating a union, which I think is an offense to God, and in fact is not going to help our nation and our land. It's going to hurt our nation and land and hurt you. To make me participate in celebrating your union is a violation of my conscience. Okay, And so government has got to make a case that, hey, uh, if every baker or every flower florist or every business doesn't celebrate gay marriage, then uh, somehow our, our nation can't exist. And I want to tell you something. Take the Bible out of it for a second. You just look at something sociologically, anthropologically, you could make a case, in fact, that it's in a compelling government interest to not define marriage, okay, uh, as anything other than between a male and a female, okay? And that is because the foundation of every society is the family. And the fact is, uh, children prosper and society prosper more inside monogamous relationships, 
uh, where male and female love each other, care for each other, and raise children. Uh, it's what's best for children. It's what's best for society. There's all kinds of data out there about that, and it's really not up for debate. One last thing. This does drive ourself uh, to one specific question, which is, is there choice? Because obviously with race, there's no choice, okay? Uh, we've decided to protect religion, which there's choice in religion and faith, but do homosexuals have a choice? We ought to do another real truth real quick with, is um, what's the difference between um, discriminating based on race and discriminating based on sexual preference, all right? Because there is a difference. If people make the claim, and I would disagree, that homosexuals are born that way, what they're saying that it's in my DNA, which means it's there at the very beginning of their formation, which means it was there when they were in their mother's womb. If you think it's, it's unloving to discriminate against homosexual people and not bake them a cake, I would say it's very unloving to destroy them while they're in their mother's womb. Okay? And so what's interesting is you don't see, this is not a logical argument, you don't see them fighting for the rights of homosexuals who were there in the womb. Okay, or for heterosexuals there in the womb. This is all about us getting to operate this way and you not telling me that what I'm doing may not be wise or is an offense to God. And so um, the, 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 the Christian response to this is we don't want to make people do stuff that's a violation of the religion. Do we want to make Muslims make T-shirts that say Muhammad's a false prophet? Okay, because they have a business and they're for a proper business. I mean, let's just take it away from religion. Do I want to make a gay baker make me a cake shaped in the form of a Bible that, that uh, I wouldn't ask for this cake to be made, but somebody might that says homosexuals are going to go to hell? Do we want to make them do that? Hey, some of the baker can make that. Why make that guy do that? All right. And so um, if that homosexual believes that his God thinks that all men should express themselves and their sexual identity any way they want, and that's his religion, I I'm not going to make him bake me that cake or make some fool who wants that cake made. I don't want uh, somebody to have to print a shirt for Westboro Baptist or a placard for Westboro Baptist uh, if the guy owns a print shop. I shouldn't make him make a sign that says homosexuals are going to go to hell. All right? Let somebody else make it. So um, there's no compelling government interest here. Uh, it's not the least restrictive way to accomplish it. And that's why the Religious Freedom Restoration Act was a good thing before the fix, which sadly in Indiana exempted sexual orientation and gender identity except for religious Nonprofit religious institutions and the agents thereof. It was a mistake uh, what they did and uh, tragic. So Christians should be firm. They should know why they believe what they believe, why uh, marriage as it's traditionally been defined is worth defending, and why it's loving to defend it. Meanwhile, be loving to all people. All right. Thanks a lot. Hey, we know you're going to have a lot of questions, comments. Uh, feel free to leave those in the comments section, and we'll dive in um, as we can. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.